Welcome to The Randy Show. I am the James Randy Educational Foundation's field coordinator, Brian Thompson, and with me, as always, is James Randy. How are you doing today? My pleasure to be here, Brian, and uh, we're going to handle power bracelets, I understand. Wow. Yeah. How's your balance? <laughs> well, mine is doing just fine, but theirs isn't doing all that well. we we got to give, first of all, before we get into the power balance thing, we've got to get full credit to our Australian colleagues in the skeptical movement down there because they really took after power balance and they got it investigated to the point where it's out of business now. And, uh, of course, there are other companies selling exactly the same sort of silly. I think I've got some sitting around the top of the desk if I can find them to balance my desk, of course. Uh, just simple plastic things with holograms on them. But Power Balance is essentially out of business, and they owe, a, owe something like $160 million or some fantastic sum of money that they have to reimburse to all people who bought the device. Yeah, for the few people who don't know, Power Balance, uh, they make these, these, like you said, these like silicone or plastic bracelets with a hologram on them, and they're supposed to uh, better your balance. They're supposed to give you more flexibility. Um, more energy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what that means. Well, it gives them more money. That's for sure. This is true. This is true. Yeah. yeah. I guess. I guess money is a kind of energy. Um, <laughs> well, I, I am sort of looking around for uh, my power balance here. I don't want to be without it for very long. I should hold on one second. I just look in the drawer here. I'm sure I have some of them. Uh, oh, maybe I'm out of power balance. Uh, that 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 happens every now and then. It's a very critical time for you, of course. Uh, well, I guess uh, most of the people who have been in my office have walked away with a power balance as a souvenir because it just doesn't exist anymore. But the battle against that particular manufacturer has been very successful. Yeah, yeah. In, in Australia, like you said, they've been completely put out of business. And, and we'll get back to that later. The big news right now is that they have filed for bankruptcy in the United States uh, because they are... Uh, they've been sued uh, by uh, a class action lawsuit. Uh, I don't know how many people are in the class action, but uh, they've basically been ordered to uh, pay back all of these people who bought power balance bracelets because yep. of false advertising. Mm -hmm. And this is a $57.4 million class action lawsuit. Uh, it's endangered a lot of things. Apparently power balance bought the naming rights to the Sacramento Kings NBA team uh, arena. So they're not really sure what's going to happen with Power Balance Arena. Yeah, there are going to be some big signs changed, I believe. I hope they weren't done in neon already because otherwise it'll just be something to go on eBay and I may even buy the damn thing. Yeah, actually, that would be a great collector's item. Oh, hell yes. They could sell that and maybe pay back some of their debts. Yeah, exactly. They owe $400,000 to uh, the NBA star Kobe Bryant for a celebrity endorsement. So uh, they're not in a, in very good financial condition right now, although they do say yeah, they do say that they are they're not necessarily going to stop making power balance bracelets. Oh, of course. Yeah. For, for the few that haven't heard the news perhaps, but th these sports figures who endorse the thing, you got to ask questions about them too. Were they fooled by it, or did they just agree through their agent that they would accept a fee of X number of dollars in order to say, yes, it's great, I use it all the time, and then wear one? Because that's usually the way these things happen, Brian. They don't actually test them. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I don't know about power balance in the NBA, but I do know anybody who watches baseball has seen that every almost every player these days is wearing these braided uh, titanium ionic energy necklaces. And it's easy for you to say. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> I have it written down on a little card. Oh, um, well. yeah. Uh, and, and they, I think that that company just sent boxes and boxes and boxes of these things to different teams, just you know, free. You? Sure, sure. And the players, you know, wear them and see if they work or see if they feel better. And um, I, I did talk to one in, uh, MLB player who uh, asked to remain anonymous. Uh, who said that he doesn't believe that those necklaces actually do what they say they do, but um, he was wearing them while his team was winning. So now it's just a, a lucky charm. 
Uh, and this must say something about the IQ or the the uh, dishonesty, perhaps, of the average uh, sports star then, or not the average, but certainly some sports stars, if they involve themselves in this sort of thing without actually meaning it and without having tested uh, the device. Of course, uh, the tests, uh, you've seen some of the tests that they offer on TV uh, for these things, including the power balance thing. Uh, they're tests of balance. And they're so easily faked. These are things that were done by the Georgia Magnet way back in the 1800s here in the United States. Uh, that was Lulu Hurst. There's a name for you. Uh, and uh, she made a, a fortune. There are several uh, imitators of her that travel all over the world. And she even uh, fooled uh, uh, Crooks, the uh, scientist in England. It wasn't too difficult to fool him because he believed in spiritualism and survival after death and the whole thing. But uh, nonetheless, Lulu Hurst was the Georgia magnet originally. Those were the tests that she did with people on stage. It was a matter if she was a little girl uh, in her teens and then very small, very diminutive, and she would get huge guys up on stage. Of course, they had to be huge or it wouldn't work properly. Not only did it not look good, but uh, she had the advantage of leverage on them. Sure. If people uh, search YouTube, they can find demonstrations of some of the uh, power balance. Thing. I think the one that I saw that, that was the most, I guess probably the most personally impressive to someone who's taking part in it, but the one that's most easily explained by uh, just you know, a, couple of, uh, a couple of minutes of, of common sense, it's when they have people hold their arm out at length. Let me see if I can get it in the camera here. Yeah. And they hold their thumb up. And they're told to just sort of spin around as far as they can, move mm. their arm back like this, and hold it there. Uh -huh. And then they're given a power balance bracelet. They put it on their shoulder or on their head because it doesn't matter where you put it. Yeah. And then they're told to try to move a little bit more this way. And oh. they always can. <laughs> and but you didn't even have a power balance bracelet on there. It shows how strong you are. Well, I mean, I have them all surgically embedded under my skin. <laughs> there you go. So let's get back to the situation in Australia. Because like you said, uh, Richard Saunders and the Australian skeptics spearheaded uh, a movement to get the Australian government to actually ban mm -hmm. power balance sales because they make false claims about what they can do. Why is it that in Australia and in other countries, the government has the power to do that and takes action, and in the United States... It has to be the result of a civil suit like this. Well, they not only have the power to do it, but they have to have the the uh, the initiative to do it. You have to, you know, when we had Claude Pepper here in, in the state of Florida, you could go to uh, Senator Claude Pepper and you could uh, convince him uh, of, of all kinds of frauds that were taking place, and he would do something about it. We no longer have uh, Senator Claude Pepper, unfortunately, but uh, we need more people uh, who represent the people, uh, the people of the United States, their constituents, uh, that we can go to and have them do something about it. If you don't have that kind of connection, Brian, if you don't make that kind of connection and go to the right people, then you're not going to get anywhere. You have to have somebody who's brave enough to stand up and, and do this. What do you think that the, uh, the proprietors of the Power Balance Corporation can do now that... Uh that business is over. Obviously, we don't want anyone to go without employment in this uh, economic apocalypse. So, uh, so what's next for them? I, I think that there are lawyers scurrying all over the place and rubbing their hands together, trying to find some way to get out of it and continue to sell the thing. All they have to do is not make the the advertisements uh, so blatantly false and and say something at the end of the advertisements. Uh, uh, there is no medical value, no physical value or effect from power bracelets whatsoever, uh, but if you wish to buy them, uh, you're free to do so. Here is the, the site, the place where you can buy them. If they make some statement like that, that takes them off the hook, technically, but also legally. And the law, of course, doesn't work well for us. It really does not work well for us, uh, in that it doesn't protect us by, by making itself clearer that a statement like that should damn the whole thing, but doesn't. The Randy Show is a production of the James Randi Educational Foundation. To learn more about how we promote science and critical thinking, go to randy.org.